Well, good morning. Good to see each one of you here. The carolers are going to go ahead and come get ready to sing. And as they're coming, what a privilege it is to, to be here this morning. Wow, wasn't that wonderful this morning in the Bible study? Looking forward to, to uh, uh, seeing how that continues to unfold. Thank you, Brother Hutchins, for that. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But whether you're here in-house or whether you're joining us online, we're so glad that you're part of our, our morning service, first morning service at Seabreeze Camp. And uh, we've, we've come on purpose, hopefully this morning, to, to focus on Him. And not only that, but as we focus on Him, allow Him to focus on us. And then if we'll just walk and step with Him, I believe God's going to continue to help us. Well, we're going to have prayer, and after that, the Hope Sound Christian Academy, the elementary choir, the caroliers are going to sing, but let's open with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence that we've sensed already, and Lord, we ask that you would just continue to meet with us in this morning service. Your will be done. May you be lifted up, and as you are, would you draw all hearts to you, and as you would help us, we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name, amen. song, beautifully sung. The scripture tells us that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Isn't that true? We are just clay in the potter's hand, but it is amazing what he can do with that clay when we yield ourselves completely to him. I invite you to turn with me to page number 354. We will also be singing 355. All because of God's amazing grace. Amazing grace, oh how sweet that saved a poor sinner like me. Oh, what? 
once I was lost, yet now I found oh, I was blinded. Now I see, and it's all because of God's amazing grace. Because on Calvary's mountain He took my place. And someday, some glorious morning, I shall see him face to face, all because of God's amazing grace. Through disappointment and danger too, through But he 
chilly in here this morning but thank you for that for that good singing it's supposed to be 80 by this afternoon so maybe your vocal cords will be a little more warmed up this evening but I do appreciate those good good songs Hebrews 4 4 6 14 to 16 have really stood out to me recently in some different situations that I've been involved with and this just I don't know just has really resonated with me here at the beginning of the year seeing then That we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What an appropriate scripture for the times that we live in. Thank God for the place of prayer. It's time to go to prayer in this service. Uh, Philippians 4 tells us to be anxious for nothing but to come with thanksgiving. And God is pleased when we make our requests known unto him. And I don't fully understand prayer. There's an element that's mysterious as it talks about our prayers and the prayers of saints from the past being poured out at the feet of God. And I thank God for the heritage and people that have prayed for me, and there are people relying on us and our prayers here at Seabreeze Camp this, this year. Don't forget in the mornings, the, the uh, tabernacle here opens up at 5 a.m. It's open from 5 until 7 or a little bit beyond that if uh, you would come and pray. There are designated prayer rooms as well, but nothing is accomplished except it's built on a foundation of prayer. Let's take advantage of that throughout camp. We do want to continue to remember Gary Howe. Bill Howell's brother, who just has many, many physical needs, and I believe there's a spiritual need as well. Let's pray for Gary, God's hand on his life, but especially for the spiritual need as well. Let's remember the other services going on. We a whole lot more happening than what's just happening in this tabernacle here today. There's a youth service that has begun, probably a couple hundred kids back there. Uh, let's pray for them grades sixth grade of our academy all the way through high school and I think a few college kids slip in there as well we have our children um, I guess it would be pre-k all the way through fifth grade and so quite a few children over there in the music hall auditorium as well so let's pray that God's word will go forth in power there as well they say that 80 percent of people come to faith in the Lord before they are 14 years of age that's a powerful statistic and uh, I know that's true in my life, and if I went around this morning, more than likely that's true here as well. It's so important what's happening in those services. Let's pray for uh, Aaron Wardlaw as he's speaking to the youth, and to Joanna Ryder and uh, uh, Joanna Stratton, and the missions majors, or the education majors, as they're ministering to the children there. I've asked Brother Daniel Lee, former FBA vice president, appreciate Brother Lee and his life and ministry so much, and I've asked him to lead us in prayer this morning. Let's stand together as we pray. What a privilege it is this morning, Father, to be able to come into the very throne room of heaven itself. The veil has been rent in twain, and that split that has happened Enable us, human beings, us who are not worthy, us who needed the grace of God to touch our hearts, those of us who were full of sin, but yet because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of that amazing grace that we were singing about a few moments ago, because of that grace, we have the privilege of talking to the Creator, talking to the great God, talking to the one who loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that we might become sons of God ourselves. Thank you this morning, Father. Thank you for what you're doing. We look around and we see a world that so desperately needs the grace of God, so desperately needs the love extended to them, that message. And we 
we can look and we can become despondent and we can become discouraged because it doesn't look like things are going right. But oh, we can look upward and we can see that you are in control. There's nothing that is impossible to you and you're able this morning for every need. We think of these needs that have been mentioned, those that have physical needs. There's several here that have been uh, mentioned because of cancer, that dreaded curse that so many have had. We pray, Father, that you would extend. May your will be accomplished in their lives. May your will be touched, we pray, by those that have need. We pray this morning for the other services that are going on. You know the young people, the children. They need so much to hear the message and to turn their hearts and lives over to them while they're yet young so that they can become established with you. We pray this morning for this service this, today. You know every heart. You know our needs. You know where we are. You have never lost us. You know what we are needed uh, to hear this morning. And we pray, Father, that your, your Holy Spirit would take those words that your servants deliver and apply them to our hearts. May we be receptive, eager, and looking forward to what you have to say to us. Touch throughout this entire encampment. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. And we pray today, Father, that you would guide, direct, lead us into a deeper relationship with you is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you could remain standing for announcements, we'd appreciate I'm joking, Sadab. Thank you, Brother Lee, for leading us in prayer. And what a privilege that we have to, to go to the Lord in prayer. We do want to give you a couple of announcements, and that being tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock right here in the tabernacle, there will be a healing service, and Brother Martin Mowry and I believe some of the ministerial students are going to be joining in in that service. Uh, but, you know, because we live in a, in a fallen world, sin and, uh, has, has come in, and because of that, sickness is part of that curse and disease and while we preach, teach, and truly wholeheartedly believe that God is the answer to the sin problem, we also need to be reminded that he's also still a divine healer, not only of spiritual things, but of physical things. And we, we can join together and pray his, his will be done. And tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, a uh, healing service will be taking place right here. We invite you to join and be part of that. And if you have any physical needs, come praying, expecting, and trusting the Lord to help. Also, uh, this evening is the Hope Sound Bible College service. President Stetler and all of his minions will be, uh, be having that service tonight. And so uh, it's always an, an, an interesting service, an exciting service. So be here, after which uh, the alumni reception will be taking place in the Schmuel Center. And as you heard last evening uh, from President Stetler, uh, whether you are uh, alumni in any way, they're kind of a broad approach to that. If, you, if you've taken a day class, if you've taken an online class, if you've even thought about coming to Hope Sound Bible College, uh, you are, no, better, <laughs> better not say that. If, if you are alumni in any way, shape, or form, you are invited to be part of that after the service. And then tomorrow afternoon at noon, uh, we're very excited having the groundbreaking service there up at the Olson Center. Uh, complex right up there. We're excited. God's helping meeting the need. Uh, a gymnasium, a family life center uh, together combined to help the church, the school, the community. We're excited about that. We invite you to be part of that tomorrow at noon there on the field. FEA Press uh, is, is excited to release their brand new book and I believe after the service they'll be back there sometime. Uh, the uh, service this morning, Brother R.G. Hutchin, uh, shared a little bit and will be doing so throughout the week and he has taken all of his notes and put them together in a book and uh, for ten dollars ten dollars you can get one of these and I, I encourage you to get one read through it read it as he and and follow through as he shares each morning and uh, I, I don't know R.G. Hutchins real well actually I just met him this this week but I I promise you this you can read it faster then he shares it. <laughs> oh, I love to hear the Southern draw. It's exciting. 
And uh, Brother Hal, you feel right at home, don't you? Wonderful, wonderful. So be sure to pick one of those up. No, in sincerity, it is, it is good stuff. And be sure to pick one of those up after the service, and you'll be glad you did take it home. Uh, samples. This is important. Samples of GC copy, coffee will be available on the south side of the tabernacle following the evening service. And the reason that's important, because if you will buy a bag and you like it, whether you like it or not, buy a bag, give it to somebody if you don't, because all of the proceeds, and that is one way that we can help support missionaries. So uh, taste it. If you like it, buy two bags. If you don't like it, buy three and give it to someone for gifts. All right? All in favor, say aye. Opposed? We're going to have good sales and coffee this week. Offering is unique. Since COVID has hit, we don't pass the plates. But yet at the same time, God continues to meet the needs. He continues to help. Right back in the main aisles, there are those little black boxes so festively decorated for your enjoyment. Please, please, as you see them, as you come and go, give in those boxes and, uh, and there's other ways that you can give as well. 68500 is what we need for the camp expense. And we believe, we believe God, even in the uniqueness of our taking of offerings, he's still going to help us to meet that need. And so be praying and give generously, give liberally. And at this time, in lieu of, we thought about if this doesn't work, maybe we can just move them up front and we can do the old birthday offerings for Jesus and give you a pencil as you go by and put in your money in the offering plate. But until we get to that point, Hannah Calhoun is going to minister in song. Jesus paid it all. Beautiful. Thank you, Hannah. And we may be cold. Hannah's probably not. It's good to have the Calhoun family here from Alaska. And for some reason, they're here all winter and they disappear in the summer. But uh, thank you, Hannah. And it's wonderful to have the Hope Sound Bible College music majors get the right department here this time, provide a lot of the music during camp. And we're very, very blessed. Thank you, Hannah, for that. And we do thank you for your giving. I've had several people come and talk to me that you plan to give during camp and that lifts the load and I appreciate that appreciate that a whole lot it's wonderful to have the Edwards family to minister to us and then following their song uh, Reverend James Plank will be speaking to us this morning it's exciting to have him here as evangelist I don't think he's a stranger to anyone but uh, the general secretary of IHC pastor of Beavertown God's Missionary Church but I've appreciated his friendship and especially over the last few years as I began leading here at FEA. I see the importance even in a deeper way of IHC and appreciate the ministry. Looking forward to IHC this year 
and just appreciate all that happens throughout the year. And big thing I say every year, but the international IHCs have been such a blessing to Hope International Missions. Every year we have one down in the Turks and Caicos Islands, and our churches there come together, and it's just been a real, real boost, and I know they do other international IHCs, and so I appreciate the mission emphasis that IHC places. So after the Edward Singh, he will be ministering to us this morning.
Jesus came since I have found him. I'm not the same. His name is Jesus. He's the for your scripture reading. What a privilege to be at Hope Sound again, be with Brother Martin, Brother Allison, Brother Stetler, and what a privilege to be with the Edwards and, um, and all of the workers. What a wonderful message last night, powerful truth, to begin the camp meeting. Psalm 121, if you're able, stand with us please for the reading of God's word. Psalm 121, I'd like for us just to all read it together, uh, not necessarily responsibly, but just all read it as I read it, out loud, together. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Praise God, shall we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for camp meeting and the privilege to be in this morning service. I ask that you would help us for these next few moments and give us the mind of Christ. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Life is so full of trouble. Jesus said in John 16, 33, In the world ye shall have tribulation. For some, it is people trouble. There is just no question that people have trouble with people. Family, friends, employers, employees, brothers and sisters in the church and in ministry. For others, it is physical trouble. Our bodies are dying even as they are born. Our emotions are often weak and frail. Pain in body or mind is real for people even sitting here today. Life is so fragile. For others, it is personal trouble. The greatest trouble of all is if we are in personal spiritual trouble. If we're not saved, if we're not sanctified, if we've drifted, and maybe that drifting has caused confusion, worldliness, or lethargy. For the troubles of life, God, through his inspired word, says, lift up your eyes unto the hills. Head upward, not downward. Don't continue down, down, down to the pits of defeat and death, but head up to the hills. Higher altitude gives us a better perspective on our location. And the Word of God gives us plenty of mountains to climb to get a clear view on our Christian life. First of all, head for the hill called Mount Sinai. In Exodus 19, we read of that great mountain. Moses is called to go up. You remember his story, acquainted with trouble and trial from day one? His first days endangered. All boys born to Jewish women were slaughtered. But Moses had a godly mother who longed for her child to live. So upon birth, that child was sheltered and hid until he could be hidden no more. And a tiny floating ark was built. Into that little boat was placed this precious infant boy. And that boat was set afloat on the Nile River at the very spot where the princess was known to go. And the heathen but tender-hearted princess finds the boat and the baby and spares his life. Moses is raised in Pharaoh's household, 
but with the knowledge that his own people are slaves. He hears the cry of bondage. He sees the chains of slavery. And out in the wilderness, that fateful day of bushes burning, but is not consumed, and God calls Moses to deliver his people. You remember the plagues as God begins to bend the heart of mighty Pharaoh. And finally, Moses leads his people to freedom across the Red Sea. And then God takes Moses to this mountain, to Mount Sinai, where the law of God is set forth. That law that God declared, uh, God's holiness and his righteousness, and in the presence of heavenly glory, the eternal standard of right and wrong, heaven and hell, was set, that standard upon which each of us shall be judged. Many have grown to hate the law and despise the law, but in a world of chaos, in a world of rebellion and sin, and in a time of trouble, we thank God for this mountain, for it tells us this fact, that in a world of change, God is unchanging. In a world of violence and chaos, God is perfect and unmovable. In a world of evil and abomination, God is righteous and holy and perfect. Head for the hills in this time of trouble. Head for Mount Sinai. The Supreme Court is not the highest court. And the world court, whatever that is, is not uh, the, the highest court. There is a God who rules the affairs of men. And, and Mount Sinai is a place of comfort for the troubled heart. From the Old Testament, you move, of course, to a hill in the New Testament. You head for the hill called Mount Calvary. The truth was the blood of bulls and goats was not enough to satisfy the demands of the law. We couldn't keep the law with all our trying. We were all going to die and go to hell, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. A greater sacrifice was needed and the God plan was for God's Son to leave heaven, to step from the throne room and step into earth's mire, to walk to Mount Calvary's cross, the place of mercy and grace, the place where forgiveness freely flows, the place of salvation and hope. You know the story. We had messed up too bad to ever find hope. We had crossed deadlines. We had burnt bridges in all the wrong directions. We had sin in our lives we couldn't get rid of. The stain was dark, the scar deep. And Jesus took all those sins to a wooden cross. And on that old rugged cross, Jesus agonized, emptied his blood, and gave his last breath so that I could forever live, and so that you could forever live. How much does Jesus really love me, the little girl asked. The answer from the Sunday school teacher was, this much with arms stretched wide, a nail pounded in each hand, wide enough this much to include you and this much to include me. If you're a sinner, you don't have to go on that way. If you're lost, you can be found. If you love Jesus, but you find the root of sin remaining, you don't have to keep slipping backwards and downwards this is the hill called Mount Calvary. Many here can join the songwriter. Twas a life filled with aimless desperation. Without hope walked the shell of a man. Then a hand with a nail print stretched downward. Just one touch. Then a new life began and the old rugged cross made the difference in a life bound for heartache and defeat. I will praise him forever and ever, for the cross made the difference for me. I don't know what your trouble is, but I know if you will look up instead of looking down, if you'll look up to the hill called Mount Calvary, Jesus will meet your need. There is room at the cross for you. And one more hill, Head for the hill of, called uh, the Mount of Olives, the last place. 
Jesus stood in visible form on earth. This was the takeoff place, the ascension place. It's here that, that we recognize the purpose of the church and the reason we're still here. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, on this mountain Jesus said, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. He gave the purpose on this mount. There is also where he gave the promise, this same Jesus which is taken from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I sure don't have the answers for my church or certainly not for IHC, the responsibilities that I have. I've declared a few things throughout the year and then by the next Sunday I wasn't sure if I, if I was um, correct on what we should be doing in 2020 and now 2021. I don't have all the answers for your church and your ministry or for our movement for this challenging day. I may not do it like you. You may not do it like me. I don't have all the answers, but I refuse to cancel, refuse to quit, refuse to hide, refuse to cower, refuse to retreat. I want to operate under the power and promise that Jesus gave on the Mount of Olives. It's on this mount where we have the end of the story. He said, I'm leaving, but I'm coming again. It's 2021, whatever chapter of history we are in. And I may be speaking to somebody who has all the charts and the chapters, and you know exactly where we are on the prophetic timeline. Uh, I don't know for sure what chapter of history we are in, but I do know how the book ends. The purpose is as clear in 2021 as it's ever been. Uh, the, the, um, the fact of Hope Sound being founded on these shores, as we heard last night, the purpose is as clear today as it's ever been for the existence of your local church your ministry, this ministry, whatever chapter we're in, the purpose is still clear and the promise is still true. Glory to his name. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. This same Jesus will come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He is a risen Christ. He is a coming Christ. Lift up your head. You're down, discouraged despondent, distressed, looking down, looking down and all you see is defeat. When you look down, that's all you see is defeat. Musicians are coming and we're preparing to close. The story is told of an old man who was a young boy, found a gold coin on the street. And so ever after, ever after he was looking for more, Always his head was down and his eyes focused on the ground. And they said he did find a coin or two, of course, in his lifetime. But he also missed the flowers that bloomed and the trees that blossomed and the mountains in their grandeur and the sunrise and the sunset and the blue sky. And instead, he spent his life seeing the dust and dirt and stuff left behind by everybody else. To him, life was a dusty road. It was dreary, just a place to look for a lost coin. Don't keep looking down. Start looking up. Live while you're alive. Look up to the Mount of Sinai. Look up to the Mount of Calvary. Look up to the Mount of Olives. Look up to the God of the mountains. He's still in the saving business. He's still in the sanctifying business. He's still in the keeping business. He's still in the prayer answering business. He's still in the grace business. Let's stand together this morning. I want you to sing. In closing, my faith still holds to the Christ of Calvary. Oh, blessed rock of ages cleft for me.
Let's sing it together as we close the service today. My faith still holds on to the Christ of Calvary. Oh, blessed rock of ages cleft for me. I gladly place my trust in things I cannot see. My faith still holds unto the Christ of Calvary. My faith still holds unto the Christ of Calvary. Oh, blessed rock of ages cleft for me. I gladly place my trust in things I cannot see. My faith still holds unto the Christ of Calvary. Praise God. The Lord bless you. You're dismissed. Thank you for coming.